and um, I pinned this in uh, this PDF in general right now. So if you want to have a look at it, um, I would shortly talk over the topics on there, and you can comment if you have a different opinion or if I'm missing there something. So. Um, I mean, from 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 the last conference, I don't even know when it was, but a lot of stuff happened. So um, the ice adapter was deployed right along with uh, making Java clients official one. Um, this happened as a result of um, work being blocked by the Python client. I have heard that Strogo is working on re-implementing features in the Python client. So. It may remain compatible, but as you will see on this roadmap as well, there are points where it will probably break again. So um, I don't know if Strogo is listening to this or other people who are interested in keeping the Python client alive. They would also need to align on all of this topic that have a C on this uh, on this roadmap. Um, yeah. Along with the Java client release, we in the last release we um, we deployed the random map generator by Neroxis, but it got removed by now for having some serious issues, which I don't know what they are. Maybe it's not deterministic. Okay, it generates different maps for different people. Okay, being investigated currently. Okay, so a lot of work is done here. And it will come in the future once this is fixed, I guess. Um, also, the new replay server or the two new replay server flavors um, that have been developed are pending for a long time now and waiting for a release on production. And um, we uh, have added a new feature to the Java client so that we can ask people to test it on production by connecting their games to the new replay server rather than the old one, because I'd rather have a, a short testing period on production over a Big Bang migration, where we, in worst case, might lose a replays for a week. So this is uh, the topic regarding the replay server. Um, in database terms, we had a lot of database cleanups. We had a lot of duplicate um, emails and login or account names, which are cleaned up now. And the next step that was applied today is we converted the database finally to Unicode, uh, which enables us now to also do case insensitive searches in the vault, which is something that was annoying all along. So this should work now. and. Um, the next step for the database would be uh, to move to the new database scheme that we have already developed in uh, the Subcom Hub scheme. We will need to check how we can work this together with the server, the API. Um, mostly, we did the work for the Java server and the Java API. But as a Java server is a completely um, independent topic, I don't think we can do it without moving the Python server along. And the next step would be to migrate to Postgres as well, because we have a lot of performance issues <clears throat> due to MySQL. So this is sort of the database migration path. Um, on the API path, the permission system will come in the future. This has already been um, <laughs> implemented in the database scheme quite a while. And in uh, the Subcom Hub, it's already working, so this needs to be backported. So then we can finally allow contributors to control parts or edit stuff in our database. For example, the map and mod team should get direct access <clears throat> to the map and mod world without relying on moderators on doing this. Um, this would also allow us to to add news to the API and replace WordPress, which is the next point on the roadmap. Um, some people already asked in Slack, what's the reason for replacing WordPress? Basically, it's a huge um, security hole in the architecture. And the benefits it's providing is basically nothing except for it has an endpoint for fetching news. 
which is rather simple and should be replaced for easier and um, less complicated solution. Um, the new patcher is in progress still, and it's probably still going to take a while because it's a very complicated topic. The new patcher is uh, one of the main reasons why we still have Steam linking in place. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, there's no ETA on that because as you can see, there are quite a lot of other topics on the table. Uh, team matchmakers in the works. Um, this is one of the um, required components for Galactic War. war. Uh, alternatively, the Java server, because there's some special stuff that is required from the, from the server protocol. Another thing that I would like to see is move the WebSocket protocol, uh, move to the WebSocket protocol for the lobby server. Right now it's a, it's a TCP connection. And um, this is, yeah, not the best. Also, the protocol is not the best at all. So there's uh, also work being done in Subcom Up. This could be backported. And these are the two uh, components missing for Galactic War. And finally, we still have these two side tasks for replacing the forums and Slack. But as you can see, they are standing alone and they don't have that priority. So that's just a brief overview on what I'm working on and what a lot of you guys are working on. OK, that would be it. Are there any questions? Any complaints? Hello? Um, do you hear me, by the way? Yes, we hear you. Because my kernel just crashed, so yeah, okay, that's good. Because um, I have a complaint about that roadmap. That is probably pretty important, but go ahead. I actually do have a question about the database. I just thought about I was thinking yeah, about this earlier. Just go ahead, and we are ordering. Yeah, so are we migrating to the new schema first, but staying on MySQL and then migrating to Postgres, or are we doing this all at once? Mm, I mean, we could do it gradually. We we don't have to do it in one big bang, um, because some parts of it um, probably rely on Postgres features, for example, yeah. leaderboard stuff. And I think we need to look into this into detail. When I drew this first, I uh, put them both together, but I don't think this. I mean, this would end up in a big bang migration that I would like to avoid. And uh, maybe we can we can look into some stuff and uh, make it compatible on the Python server first and then move slowly into that direction. Yeah, I, I have started doing some work on that in the Python server. I, you know, I, I set it up so I can select between a Postgres and MySQL and it will use different schemas, but it's still gonna be a lot of work to rewrite all of the queries. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't even know exactly which tables are all used by the server. There's a lot of stuff that is now handled by the database, which um, wouldn't care about being Postgres or MySQL. It's just a JDBC connection string. But yeah, we should look into this in, in detail. Yeah, and I guess, so the permission system, because I saw the, the Subcom Hub um, schema has the new stuff for permission system. Uh, yeah, so. But that that's would... not new. That's already in the FAF scheme. We're Is just it? Okay. not using it yet. Yes. So basically, okay, I'll it's. I have to look at that. Yeah, it was missing implementation on API side, and it's done. It just needs to be backported. going to break everything.
Um, do, do you want to get to the SH point now? Do you want to get to the SH point now? Because I still have something about their roadmap that I'm pretty annoyed with. <clears throat> okay, so basically, the, the thing is about the Java server. In there, in that roadmap, it requires the Java server for the WebSocket protocol to be able to implement Galactic War. And I've thought quite a bit about that because I've been currently working on the party system and match, uh, team matchmaking system. And I've implemented the party system in the Python client. And while doing that, uh, not the Python client, the Python server. And while doing that, I also took a look at the Java server. And it turns out implementing things in the Java server is way, way more complicated than the Python server. So far that I actually think the Java server would hurt FAF. Because in the current situation, we at the moment have like two active Python server developers. We have three to four people capable of developing the Python server, which means at the moment we do have more Python server developers than Java server developers. And then there's also the issue that the Java server is, of course, completely untested while the Python server has been running for years. So it's probably full with hundreds of sleeping undetected bugs, which are unable to be detected if you don't have it running. And it also prevents people from being able to start contributing to the project as it is extremely well engineered, but also extremely difficult to get into it. For example, the, the PyJava server was built with the requirement of being able to switch the protocol for communicating with the client dynamically, which makes the engineering of the server more difficult and especially the implementation of new features. Which is also why, for example, I've been talking with Eskaholic if we would be capable of implementing something like the WebSocket protocol or a protocol switch in the sorry <laughs> in the Java in the Python server, which might be faster than working on the Java server itself or getting those bugs fixed in there, because it would just guarantee us availability and maintainability for the future instead of locking the project down. Because basically. For example, you might have noticed that Download hasn't been doing a lot over the past months. It has been pretty busy, I think, with other things. So at the moment, we would be left with nobody really knowing that project as the Java server was written entirely by him. Yes. The only people might be the Brutus, me, and Alex. And Alex has been pretty busy with the client. I don't want to get into that server neither, because there are other things like team matchmaking or galactic war that can be worked on. And yeah, Brutus, I don't know if you have the time to do that, or there are still other projects like Delta Forge or the API, so I don't know if it's worth that really anymore, because now we have people capable of working on the Python server, which we didn't have for a long time. Okay, so sorry for that long monologue. <laughs> I am very pragmatic on this. I mean, you see these dashed lines, and they are there for a reason, so... Um... Galactic War will need a web socket, web socket protocol. Yeah. Um, whether it comes from the Java server or the Python server, I don't care about. Doesn't need um, to be web, uh, web socket, but anything to communicate with the server. The, it, web socket is probably my, suited for that, yes. Yes. Well, I'm not going to implement a native TCP connection anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so because that's stupid on doing it in a in new yeah. application. That's the reason why I said, OK, if, if we want to do that, we either do it with a Java server or we do it with a WebSocket protocol on the Python server. I don't care from the Galactic War perspective. And um, I was al also thinking about, like, OK, um, if we can't get it uh, done in the Python server, we could like implement a new environment and have Java server just running for Galactic War for a testing period. Um, it's not written in stone. I don't, mm -hmm. don't want to enforce the Java server anymore. You're right on that. I see the same reason for, as you. And uh, But it's still on the roadmap because I don't think Donald gave up on it. And I think it's still being developed. That does, I don't. I don't think we should uh, like say, okay, we we're, we're definitely going to use Java server and drop work on the Python server because I'm glad that people took this uh, took took the torch and started working on it again, and now it gained some momentum. And if we can maintain this, if if the Python server gets new features, I don't care about the language. I care about the quality. 
if you talk about quality, <laughs> if you watch it um, by server now, I think it's uh, it became a little bit better with Askaholic. He gives a big effort to it. But I would uh, I would stop watch at uh, this server. Maybe made some uh, better uh, arch architecture uh, decisions. Uh, make it better to be, uh, to, to make uh, the Python server be more maintainable, and then move on. Like if you want to stay with Python server. Yeah, I could it, yeah, yeah. It could definitely use some uh, some big refactoring. That's for sure. Is it if if you want to stay with Python server, we have to put the effort to it. Nothing else. Yeah, I mean the yeah. point is I I don't know how Escaholic feels about it. I mean the people who can do Python probably don't want to do Java anyway, so why not do it? It's not true. I'm okay with anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just it's probably way easier than to just fix the issues that are there in the Python server than to debug all those bugs that we don't know about yet in a Java server. I think we have to make the decision. Like it shouldn't be done yeah. now. We, but... we probably have to talk about that another time, and we have yeah. to consider, for example, also collecting war. What do we need there? Can we do that? The the point is, right now we don't have the manpower to bring the Java server to production if mm -hmm. download yeah. stays off the line. Yeah, that's my the... that's my opinion. Yeah. If he comes back and starts working on it, that's great. Then we can talk about it again. But we need some, like, some dedication, yeah. And I'm not questioning the overall effort that Download did, but it's it's not helping. If we if we put now all our effort into this, then we will lose some of the other features on this page. Yeah, we can't have it all at once, and we need to think about where where is our time invested the best. That's just the reason. I mean, yeah. So. As far as like WebSockets on on the Python server, um, I don't think that would be too hard to do. But again, it's just like an issue of priorities now. Is do I work on adding WebSockets, or do I work on Team Matchmaker, or do I work on refactoring the the Python server so that it's easier to maintain? I mean, at the moment, I feel like I'm the only one who's working on it who can do those big refactors or those big changes like Louvregard can do some of the other fixes and stuff but right now i don't feel like anyone else is really working on it so i i kind of have to choose oh, yeah. which which big projects yes and in that and if you ask this question i would say go for team matchmaker because this brings instant yeah. benefit to the player base and the web socket protocol i mean for galactic war we need the team matchmaker code base anyway so yeah. let's do this first and then let's see how we can get this yeah. hooked up and for the web sockets. Implementing what we would need for Galactic War in the Python server is probably not going to be that big of an issue as it is to yes. get the Java server up to date. One notice, um, there's this developer Uber secret private channel. Probably try reading that as well as Lufgrad doesn't have a microphone at the moment. Just keep an eye on that. OK, SH? A second. I cover right wrote something, but I'm not as fast in reading as you, and I don't want to lose her thoughts.
Yeah, it's sort of like closing the gap between SH and FAV. So, um, I mean, the, the more features we, we backport, the less issues we would have in case we wanted to do a migration still to the job. So, but yeah. Maybe give some background. What it even is and where it came. You have to do it at least yearly. Yeah, it's basically about transforming FAF from being owned by the limited liability company into being, in quotes, um, owned, not really, or managed by a, a registered association which has to work for non-profit and is, by law, organized democratically. It's about splitting power, basically, not having a single person in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the main reason or, or another benefit would be like we have a, a, an organization of how people who want to contribute to FAF, be it by not only development, but also like showing up and discussing things, uh, registered, registered association exactly does this. Like you can become a member. Um, it's, it's You can like... Compare it with, with the Debian project, they vote for a project leader. He represents uh, the project to the outside world. He can make contracts and rent servers and whatever. And if you don't like the person who's in charge in the next year, you can vote for somebody else. You can also do that immediately. 
with like two thirds or so of members calls yeah, for another that, general that, assembly, you have to hold one. Let's let's not go into details here. <laughs> so the the main the main point waiting right now is that we need seven members that uh, need to sign the constitution in Germany, and uh, after that. Uh, you don't have to be German to join this association, so you can live anywhere. Um, and usually we wouldn't need to go for an annual fee of membership, but we want to uh, sort of avoid fake memberships that, uh, that try to influence votes. So it won't work without it. Yeah, basically that's, that's it. Download. <coughs> Just kidding. You hit it. Um, I, I, I might also should have added that um, in this association, you, um, of course, you don't have to be a member to contribute to fast, but if you want to be a member, don't know how much different that difference that will make. I, I want to say that to contribute to FAF and be in this, like you don't have, of course, don't have to be a member of the association. It, it yeah, it's basically just about being being legally able to vote out the management of the association. Good. Your job. So, so what is the goal you want to achieve? Do you want to uh, have uh, players posting money on bucks? Is that what you want to achieve?
Well, then I would direct you to the promotion counselor. Okay, so basically ICE. Uh, yeah, ICE has been going for some time now. It seems to be working pretty fine, but I've seen some issues so like multiple people have contacted me, especially Australian people, like only Australian people, like 10 different people have contacted me about not being able to connect between, um, or having a really high latency to their peers. So for example, um, a lot of Australian people, when they play with friends, Oceanian, Oceanian people in general, they will most of the time be behind carrier grade net. It's basically um, pretty common in Australia for internet service providers to place their customers behind carrier ooh, carrier grade net, meaning that they won't be able to connect directly. There's nothing the ice adapter can do about this, meaning that the ice adapter that oh yeah yeah that thing that's the right thing, meaning that the ice adapter will relay those people at the moment. Uh, currently, that means those people will be relayed via Europe, via the ffforever.com server, meaning that basically they get from sending a signal, a round trip time signal, they will go to Europe, back to Australia, to Europe again, and back to Australia just for sending a message from between those two people, um, which will result in like a round trip time of 600 to 800 milliseconds. And if you're familiar with FAF or FA, you might know that everything about 500 milliseconds causes the game to fail. Um, so those people won't be able to play with each other anymore. And the, the best solution for this is basically to have more relay servers. And at the beginning, we considered um, using Trilio. The issue here is uh, I've taken a look or I've asked Chia about that of course, due to that. At the moment, the FA server is having like an incoming traffic of between 100 to 200 gigabytes per day. Nearly all of that is relay traffic because we don't have a lot of services where people send us traffic. And if we calculate that for Trilio, we land between like 70, 80 to 100 dollars per day. So like up to $3,000 a month. So basically we can't run this via Trilio. Um, the option would be to just use the central server, so the FA Forever server for most cases. And in case the latency to that server is really high, we could either opt for a Trilio-based solution, which will take one of Trilio's local relay servers, or what we could also do is we could get some more relay servers for FAF, like just pretty cheap servers rented in some data center in Oceania, for example, would be the most needed one. So that's what this is all about. We we should consider, um, we should talk to Shio and Vizionik about that too. Sadly, none of them is here. How it is about FAF's finances and if it's possible to get like another server which we can just use for relaying and just for those people with a really high latency so that Oceanian people can still play when there's another Oceanian people uh, person in that game. Would that make them still be able to play with European players? Yeah, of course. Um, the, the, the issue here is that the signal between two Australian people gets rerouted through Europe. If you're in Australia, and you get a relay in Australia, that relay will, of course, be able to connect to a European person. Okay, and then speaking in terms of our application, so we would need a co-turn server running in Australia, and it's basically connected yes. to the European one, and they know how, when to use which one? Or... Yeah, that, that's the tricky part, but I think that should be fairly easy. I will just have the ice adapter send an ICMP echo or something like that to the relay server before choosing one. Maybe we need more than one uh, server in Australia. Maybe we need to, to spread to, mm -hmm. to buy more than one servers, like one in Australia, one, one in America. 
Yeah, that, that's the other point. The, the most needed one is the one in Oceania. We could also think, of course, about America. But as far as I've seen, it should be still okay from America at the moment. Also, they don't have that much carrier grade nets over there, that many. But yeah, that's the other point. We could also think about one in America, but so far I've only seen Oceania. And I don't know how much money FAF has. That's even an option. If you want to test this, we could get a free tier Google Cloud VM in America and try to do this for at least for Americans. Could do that. The question is if they legally allow you to proxy traffic. A lot of hosting providers yeah. do not allow that. We can check this, I guess. Yeah. So uh, is this a topic that we should put on the roadmap? Maybe. It, currently, it's causing Australian players to not be able to play with each other. Like, there is no way around this. Three or four of them have caught their ISPs and they put them off carrier grade net, but sometimes that costs money. And that's, that's only the people that complain to us. Um, Mm, no. no, I can't hear myself too. Um, yeah, in, in theory, it should have been the same before, but those people have told me it was just that way after ICE was implemented. I don't know. Seriously, it shouldn't be possible in theory to get through a carrier grade net. I don't know. Might need to do some in regress investigation about that. Relay. We we need a bit of code in the ice adapter, and basically we need more servers. Yeah, or we could just use Twilio for those cases, which would automatically, based on GeoDNS, choose the nearest relay server for America or for Oceania. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess I think I already said something about it. Do you want to say more? Well, I thought it was decided so when we are going with. Yeah, I recall asking Askaholic to decide. Wasn't that him? Yeah, someone asked me to look at them, and so <laughs> I looked at them and I said, I feel like Mazers was nicer, so... But I never ran either of them. I just gave my, my opinion, and people uh, decided that my opinion was what they were going to go with, so... So if anyone else has an opinion, then go ahead. So yeah, my main criteria would be, does your replay server also offer the five minute delay for live replay? It does. Okay, because I saw something in chat and- uh... Does it handle the pauses in the game? What does it mean? It does I mean, mean it when has, I, I'm playing with you. Five... It has a five minute five. delay of real time, no matter what. I'm playing with you. I'm playing with it you. Is. I will make the game on pause. Like I'm going, uh, and I will say I'm going to the toilet. I have open. Uh, I have uh, another stream from uh, replay server, 
live stream. Get back in five minutes. Write. Uh, I will write you that I need one more minute. And the replay server uh, real time delay that you have will send the data. So I will get exactly on the same moment the pause. But uh, the packet <coughs> from, uh, from my chat will move the stream up to this moment. Well, actually, um, I said that argument a few times, so I'm going to just repeat it again. Um, <laughs> my argument is this. You could use, let's say, pausing for five minutes or lagging the game a lot to cheat. But if you do it repeatedly, you'll just start getting kicked out of games. And honestly, if you're this dedicated to um, cheating, as in watching the game, then a player could well as well just redirect the game stream that his own game sends to another instance of his game. So the idea of the five minute delay is to discourage trivial cheating, right? The kind that somebody who doesn't know how to use a PC can come up with. But if you want to cheat in Subcom by watching a replay, then you always can do it. And you can't eliminate it because every single client just sends the data and you can intercept it. Yeah, that's my point. So, yeah, so this kind of complex stuff is, it adds a lot of complexity for almost no benefit okay i and have uh, uh, have... i have yeah, another opinion ahead. you have uh, tournaments for money people are playing and where people are doing the pauses and uh, i think uh, for example two minutes pause give a lot of benefit with your server to the guy cheating and you will never understand Well, first of all, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want it. So since the discussion over which server is better is still alive, even though I wanted to resolve it a lot, a long time ago, I want this to be resolved. I want some people competent who just have the power to decide or have the uh, authority to make a decision to just look at our code and make the decision which of these is more maintainable and less likely to have bugs well it was but now i'm hearing arguments that i still hear arguing that which server is better and that we should deploy both i i want to be done with it i want a decision which server we choose because i don't want to deploy both there's no point stalling this any longer Okay, one, one more question. Yes. Uh, no, I want. Well, if I could cut in, if I could just cut in, because I know you have these plans to deploy one server and deploy the other, but my point is, I've been asking forever, 
for somebody with 10 minutes of spare time to just do a quick comparison review because I think the decision is that easy. If we could do that, we could just do away with the whole idea of deploying one or the other or combining. No point, just look at the code, please. Yes. And I recall Dragonite agreeing that with his decision. Yes. But now my he decision. went back on that. Yeah, that's my point. Make it deploy. Deploy it. I know. Please deploy it because I'm waiting with uh, with version that does work. First, listen. You listen. You. Yes, I know. I respect the efforts. I credit Dragonite as the co-author for the version I have because he did figure out plenty of things about the protocol. <laughs> I, uh, and I, I did take like, some of these database queries and stuff. Uh, stop it. Uh, stop this dis discussion. I will, uh, what I want is to uh, uh, is uh, only one thing: make it deploy, push it, push the things forward. I don't see the reason uh, why we have to wait and don't push it. You, you are not. Uh, I didn't saw you working on the replay last uh, uh, long for a long time, and uh, if it's done, let it deploy. You don't well, push yeah, it. This is forward. the intention. But if so, then why did you even call, come up with the same argument about comparing this service? I thought you agreed with Askaholic's decision. And now you just went back on it. So just for now, if my server turns out to be complete garbage, it's undeployable, it has a lot of bugs, I'm OK for conceding. I never said What's that. Your server. Never said, I never said that. What I'm saying, let's try to deploy it. And uh, I, I have one version that is ready to deploy. Uh, that's why Bruto start uh, at the beginning uh, to ch uh, to choose the environment. That, uh, that's why uh, he uh, put his effort to uh, switch the production and production with new version of Replay Server. Make it deploy. Well, yes, this is my intention. My It should already be automatically built at this point. It was set up to do so. Yeah. So yeah, my version is ready to be deployed whenever Good. as well. Good. Then we will just deploy a Maze and Oops version as soon as a new uh, Puff Client version is out, because then people can choose to um, connect with their client to a different replay server. The idea is not to compare both of your versions against each other, but the idea is to run the legacy one and let a few people uh, stream to the new server. And if everything works out, then we just deploy it as a final version and delete the crappy old one forever. OK. Uh, just one more thing. Just one more thing related to the uh, new dat database schema and all of that. Yes. We'll have to adapt the replay server to it as well. And I think the current schema might not provide enough info to uh, save the replay with everything it needs to be then launched again. Stuff like, I don't know, optional game mods and stuff. We'll have to check that again. Mm, yeah, but please contact me with details. I'm not sure what you mean, because we didn't drop any information on the new database scheme. I think there are no longer all those. We, we, with, with looking at the time, let's just yeah, yeah, go ahead. tell me in Slack, and then we can have a short discussion. I'm yeah, pretty right. sure it's, uh, it, sh it should be the case.
Yes. Do it. Case closed. Next point. <laughs> Oh, uh, you mean the wiki? Yeah, that's a short one. We have a wiki, and we keep losing info on Slack. We could just put some up some wiki pages, treat it as a dev wiki, or make a second instance of it. That's that's it. Just let's use it. Um, can can um, you give okay. me one example of these questions? Because my, my main question is, I mean, you have a wiki on every repository in GitLab, in GitHub, and I would prefer to see the information there, but I know that there's also overall information and I would, maybe we can put the overall information into the wiki on the, on the FAF wiki and just link to the, to the other GitHub wikis. Mm -hmm. So, what are the questions that are asked many times? Recover is writing something. Yeah. Recover has a problem with the latest, the last point. She's against removing Rotic from the website. Well, where did we write that? Oh, shut down the web. The developer okay. Uber yeah, Secret yeah. Private Channel. Where is, he, where is she writing? Developer Uber Secret Private Channel. Above the voice channels. Well, I mean, the, the point is um, maintaining it twice doesn't sound like a smart idea, but I don't think there are any changes uh, coming up. Um, and I, see, I think the native integration in the Java client would, would be much smoother. What about just throwing a web view into the Java client? Like yeah, goodbye that, memory, a but way of doing shitty things, because <laughs> um, I, I, I like, for example, the map wall. This, this, uh, you get issues with with authorization and everything again. It's not a good idea. Well, can you do? So I'm not familiar with Java FX, but could you do like a a web view, but all of but all of the code is like in it's it's integrated into the client. Like you're not actually going to the web. You're just pulling like CSS and HTML locally. That's what we're already doing with the yeah, chat, okay. for example. All right. Yeah. It's way less RAM. I think Recover has the point. Yeah, but I mean, the website is also not that good. Like, you cannot see what you voted in the past. You cannot change votes and stuff like this. Uh, I mean, it's... Is anybody going to fix this ever? Maybe they'll fix it if it's uh, also a web view in the client. <laughs>
But I just think she doesn't want you to remove it from the web. I mean, is there is there a big problem with uh, you know having two different implementations? I don't know. Like, mm. I feel like this the voting app isn't going to change that much, is it? No. The the main problem from architectural view is that we have like different web applications scattered across instead of having one unified web app, right? Yeah, so you have a map wall that you can browse in the web, which looks completely different than the, the website login. And then you have a, a voting app here. And uh, every time you need to log in again. So the, I mean, if we had a web developer working full time on this, for example, I would ask him to put it all into one nice page with a control panel and everything. But um, it's, I mean, you can always ask um, what has to go to the client and what has to go to the web for the account. So I would ask a question, why would you need to do map and mod upload into the client? I mean, you could also do it on a website. So there's no strict <laughs> line. Okay, okay, who will solve that? So you're disp responsible for discussion in the future. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, about the team matchmaking, you may have heard about that. Um, I've started some work on that lady, uh, lately. Did some implementation in the Java, uh, Python server and I'm currently working on the Java client while Escaholic is busy implementing the matchmaking itself in the Python server. So this will hopefully be ready sometime soon TM. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, yeah. I'll just throw this out quickly. Yeah, I have like um, code written for basically for the implementation now I just need to test it and work out the bugs and stuff which I'm waiting for a client implementation yeah. that can yeah communicate with it the client is currently the problem that's blowing it but I'm working on that um, the, the main issue why I'm bringing this up now is that uh, every time I talk about team matchmaking with people Everybody thinks they know exactly how it's going to be and everybody agrees with them. But if you actually talk about it, you find out that people have pretty different imaginations for this. So basically, I'll just sum up some of the main intentions behind this. It was, for example, for fixing the lobby simulation problem, for example, for shortening the times before actually entering a game, for making games more balanced and for forcing people to actually play maps they don't play that often so you, you often see people complaining that some people just play certain maps and it's about presenting people with different maps and assigning them to different spots each time so they also have to come up come up with new strategies to adapt and don't just play the same map all over um, so basically the, the main question why this point is here is what do you want to achieve with team matchmaking do we want to uh, present team matchmaking as the way to play fast? Just as a matchmaker presented instead of the custom games, the custom games as an actual custom game, which is additionally there for people that want to play something special. While for the rest, it's basically like any other game, League of Legends or Overwatch, where you just get into a queue. Or do we want to present it more like it's just a multiplayer uh, like team ladder? Um, and then there's also the question, how do you do the rating? That's also merging into the next topic. Do you have one rating for the custom games and the team match made games, as both are somewhat casual games? Or do you split those rating? Do you integrate the team match make color rating with the ladder rating? Or do you represent it like a red a ladder rating? Do you cater it like a ranked mode or just like a casual mode? And then also, do you keep the 1v1 rating and the team matchmaking rating separate? Basically, there's a lot of options here. And each time you talk about that with people, you get some different opinions. Everybody's saying it, of course, has to be this. That's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, it's just about presenting the point and telling people, yeah, we have a problem here. We need to, to, to basically get a few, what do we want to achieve? What is our goal with team matchmaking? Like it's, it's not important for the technical implementation. But every time I talk with, uh, about it with people, everybody just says, yeah, it's obvious how we're going to do that. Yeah, it just, yeah, I don't know if it makes sense to discuss this now, but I just wanted to mention it for people to think about it, and we have to have a debate about this. Because it could influence FAF a lot. I, I don't know if a debate now makes sense. I don't think so. It will take too long and it will be too chaotic, but... Yeah, maybe just get them some, some proposals detailing how it works and then, yeah. Mm. I, th I think for uh, implementation, the biggest question is, do we split the rating up? Mm. And and for that, I guess we kind of even want the the new schema because the new schema supports multiple ratings and stuff. So because that's the only thing that I haven't really done anything with is multiple ratings, multiple map pools and stuff. A bit. Maybe we can, sorry, maybe we can try to think a little bit further. And uh, if in the sum uh, will become the galactic war, I think there there should be uh, the rating system too. Maybe we can. Yeah, I've looked at the schema in the subcom hub. You can have as many ladder ratings as you want, as many map pools and stuff. And I think each ladder rating or each, sorry, leaderboard rating, there's like, you can create leaderboards and each leaderboard can have like a rating associated with it or something like that. It, it, it works pretty nicely. Yeah. So basically it'll require kind of like a simultaneous update of like all of the services. Yeah, you sort of lost me. Well, what what point are we talking right now? We were talking about rating split. Yes.
Mm, yeah. Mm. Can't we like? <clears throat> I'm I'm not entirely sure. Also, I think this requires materialized view on Postgres, but I would need to look it up. I mean that there's would no problem to to implement it and then having I, I don't know maybe for starters both both systems the old table and the new table and then once we've migrated everything to the new table delete the old tables but yeah sounds it's it's messy stuff rating is always difficult. Yeah, I I don't think it seems that easy <laughs> changing anything with a database schema like that. Uh, but but there was a valid point about the Fuff wiki. What did we? I think we sort of skipped it. So I said I wanted to have it in GitHub uh, wikis, and then I asked for examples. What what are the questions that are asked again and again? So, Bazen, are you still with us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, originally, the well, I thought about it because I recall having an idea for implementing something that would involve uh, mm, something, some spots from the game and stuff like that. Basically, the idea is we sometimes have these. It, ideas or projects that span multiple uh, services like the client and the server. And I sometimes see that the idea that, hey, I'm developing a client. I'd like the game to do something, like the game's lobby to do something. It kind of gets lost and forgotten about. I mean, I'd, I'd at least like to have a place where I can write down that I have this idea for, I don't know, I think it originally came up with when we were trying to do some way of game and uh, the client communication like to have a place where i can write down some okay. cross service project okay so it's it's not all about documentation of stuff but more like a work in progress page I mean, you can just op start, a, uh, start a page on the wiki and, and get going. Uh, you just need to link it at, from the development uh, sites or whatever, so people have it in the right context. Yeah, I suppose. OK. Good. Yeah, the idea of multiple ratings. We discussed it already, I think. That's basically the same thing as the matchmaker goals. Awesome. You, you can, in theory, have different matchmaker queues, for example, and have not only sorted them by the player count, you could also have different map pools. And you can put like total maps in there, you can 
whatever kind of map you want in there, and then you could split rating. Also, we need a new DB layout for that. No, no, no. Uh, the maybe if I could say what I meant by this, the original idea came up from other people on some YouTube videos and stuff. Basically, um, people. That didn't represent how they how they do in smaller team games or non-total non team games or 1v1s. So the idea was to split the rating by map, for example, giving each map a category or something like that. So that rate, rating gain in one doesn't affect other rating types. That's the general idea. The main problem of this is that you need a huge amount of tagging to to categorize what game would even go into which rating. And that's a thing I don't think we can really do with everybody can upload any map and mod, which should affect this. It also feels like a kind of overkill to have that many different ratings. I mean, if you want to know kind of if you're good at playing 1v1 versus good at playing team games. I mean, maybe there could be some sort of way to uh, query aggregate statistics on the just game history, like wins and losses. You could look at your win-loss ratio instead of having an actual like true skill rating for everything. Okay, so maybe maybe a good idea would be to uh, get some like example, some like better documentation on the API, some like example queries. So I know you the API has the API has the swagger thing, but I find it I find it quite hard to figure out how to actually set up my queries so that they do what I want. I just have to look at those. There's like four or five examples on the in the README. The what? Oh, right, right. Okay. But yeah, I, I still think it would be a good idea to have, you know, maybe if someone could just put a couple more examples of complicated things on the readme, just a couple examples would help a lot. And then, yeah, if, no, obviously not. <laughs> but yeah, then, nope. <laughs> but as far as the rating thing um, and qu making those queries with the API, yeah. If Mazer Noob, if you want to, I don't know, add something, some preset to the Java client, I don't know. Does that sound like uh, something we want?
All right. Okay, um, so basically I just put that on there as in the, the over the past one or two weeks I've seen lots of complaints by people um, not being able to do something using the Python client, which at that point was just a, that feature broken. And like then being told, yeah, use the official client and they go like, what, there's, um, isn't this the official client? And like um, I also took a look and I think I found out why that is the case. Back then, when we changed from pre-ice to ice, um, we basically we didn't have a Python client. So the server rejected the Python client that was connecting, or it just told that user to please update their client. And I've taken a look. There's a field in the database for a required client version, which is set to a version lower than the current Python client version. What the Python client now does, is, uh, if you connect to the server, is it checks the GitHub repository. And currently in the GitHub repository, there is a new version of the Python client, meaning those people will upgrade in silence to uh, another version of the Python client, which uses eyes, so they won't even notice something where something suspicious is going on, um, which may cause them to get a version of the client that simply doesn't work or stops working at some point in time. There are a lot of people who have decided to use the Python client. I think currently there are 25% of users actively play using the Python client and fine of course but I think we may want to do something about this as a lot of people just don't notice that the client version isn't actually supported anymore so one solution hmm? Like, take a look at the forum, what just came in. There's a question, OP, what do you consider to be the old client? Just came in like an hour ago. Oh, okay. So basically so. it's about people not knowing that their client might break or is breaking and then complaining that the client isn't working anymore. So the so. solution I propose, give me one second. Okay. okay. What I would propose or what would be one solution is to either move that client out of the FA Forever Orger or to just rename the repo into something like a legacy client or so. Yeah, but it's about breaking the... What I'm saying, Alex, is if you rename the repo to, for example, legacy client, or it can be anything, it can also be Python client or Faf Python client, I don't know. The, the reason why I suggest that is that people that had a client installed before ICE will no longer automatically get the update pop up. So they get the warning from the server that they need to update the client and go to the FA Forever page. The, the, the issue is currently that those clients automatically update. The pre ICE clients automatically update to them. Python client version that may be broken or is broken at the moment, as far as I know, with the new server upgrade. So that's my so issue here. What I was going to suggest is because right now the um, the Python server will send a warning if your client tries to do the old version of uh, setting mm -hmm. up, you know, the UD UDP ports and stuff. Um, Connectivity test. It could it could just I could add a warning in there. If it sees it, like just check the user agent, and if it's not the download client, it can send them a warning. It's a little bit hacky, but we, we can do that. But you start annoying players that want to use the Python client with that. That's the dangerous part. It's also, it wouldn't be that annoying because it would happen every time you log in. Yeah. You would. If you decide to use the Python client, it, you just you click through that. You just yeah. hit OK, and it goes away. 
maybe even in the next download there's like a checkbox where you can disable that though. So just like a, yeah, your client is unsupported, we suggest using the official client warning, something like that. Okay. Mm. Yep. At at th at this very moment, the Python client is currently broken since the server update. It doesn't display any games. Nope. Yeah, so so, I, so the old version of uh, it used to check a field game featured mod versions or something like that, and I remember that. Yes. Um, and even though it's not using that to update the game, it was still checking the field, and it was, and since it didn't get the field, it would just crash, and not display any games. Yeah. So, uh, oh, it's it's in client development on Slack. But yeah, it's I think there's already a, there's already a fix available. It just needs pushing. I think. Well, okay. just anybody push it, release a new release a new client version. Maybe slap a big uh, this client version is no longer supported message somewhere in the layout, and that's it. We we could actually do that with the next client release. Yeah, that's it could a go very straight thing. Uh, yes, then people what the oh, update system is for in the first place. Yeah, but then um, people with the old version will first update without a warning, and then they will only see the deprecated warning. But yeah. Yes, we don't have the means to do it any other way. So uh, we can send it from the server. <laughs> I don't think the client actually processes that anymore, and it hasn't for a while. At least I don't see it in current code. It processes what? You mean your idea is that the server can send a message, kind of message, and the client displays the contents, right? It, it does that. Well, we have I done that for ice. Code. Oh, well. We have done that for ice, yes. Yeah, OK, OK. OK, um, who's going to be responsible for that? Yeah. Like it's it's either a scholic or somebody who's going to work a bit on the client. Probably well, sorry, I think the people who still work on that client will not uh, will <laughs> don't want to make a change that says this is unsupported. And there's only one person working on that, and those people don't have any rights to do releases or merge pull requests. Yeah, I mean we're still trying to get a cooperative work style here, so. Uh, yeah, we we could also do it in the server. Talk, talk to Strogo first. Yeah, yeah, we should talk to him, but yeah. Yeah, I can I can add a server <laughs> message in there very easily if we want to do that. That's making easy. Strogo responsible for for that is a bit mean, I think. <laughs> I mean, we... Yeah, there's no simple solution on that. Yeah. So basically, we agree that we should do something about that, right? Yes, maybe well, maybe we, we start with some aggressive news posting first before we take any annoying measurements. I yeah, I have to agree. Nobody does. I don't think people will notice unless you unless you just tell them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's why I didn't suggest the it's... annoying thing, but just moving the repository so the updater doesn't update those pre-ice people that come back to the game after two or three years anymore to the broken version. I'm not suggesting telling the people that want to run the Python client that they're running the Python client.
yet they can fix it with the next release. Yeah, not do this. I'll make a pull request on the server and decide if you want to merge it or not. Okay. I wrote it. Uh, Yes, well, uh, there's there are two so thoughts. First of all, um, I would like to ask if we are uh, growing with people, like these players. If no, uh, do we want to do? What? What uh, do you mean? Not only register. No, I add the the, the twenty five percent. So basically, I I pulled the from the database the people that logged in in the past month and pulled their last user agent, and that gave me like three thousand four hundred people with downloads uh, with the fast client, the Python client, three thousand five hundred, and around twelve thousand four hundred people with downloads fast client. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can take a look at that later. Uh, That's a more complicated query. Yes, no problem. Uh, the, the thing is, um, I don't know if we can make the advertisement or invite people into the game somehow, because, excuse me, FAF uh, or like STFA is like maximum 10 bucks uh, uh, at. Uh, it's a cheap game. If there is the way and possibility to get more people, and if yes, uh, can we uh, can we uh, as community uh, invite them to play in the game? Well, uh, well, why I'm uh, I'm asking when I, why I'm speaking about about that is. If we, um, we will have no people who will play, all what we are doing is useless, nothing else. Who is it? The mountain. Who? Mountain. Right, right it, uh, who is responsible here? Type it, type it, type it. Okay. Okay. And the other thing uh, is uh, <laughs> developers. Uh, well, I made... I made... Uh, well, it, uh, it's fine. Uh, I have uh, seen the guy who was streaming the, on the Twitch, how he is doing the Java creator. Yeah. Yeah, it's Matthew. Um, yes, uh, maybe, uh, but we met him some, some, somewhere very lucky. Uh, well, maybe uh, we need more people who could help us to move things for forward and i don't know where uh where we can uh invite them not just for 10 bucks to solve our our problem please but uh i don't know if you, if you... if uh, if you can uh, uh for example make two three people who will uh, who will search for for uh developers it would be fine Uh, well, uh, post. 
Yeah, the only oh, yeah. way I imagine that is we get a larger player base and developers in the player base, will player base will just mm -hmm. end up wanting to help us, and that's it. We can't just explicitly look for them. Can we? Because it's hard to get in. Uh, well, uh, you have said Oh, sexy, sexy. <laughs> Very cool idea. Like we were, we were working with uh, Brutus, and I learned a little bit about uh, uh, Java about Java client. It was really interesting. I think it's a really nice idea to get people to work with you. Uh, even Python, uh, Python people could work on Java, and Java could work on Python. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> One way, yes. Other way. <clears throat> also, Alex is not going to do that. <laughs> no. Okay, we're now at one hour and 40 minutes. Another one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I will be so there too. As I have something well about recruiting testers, like um, now Brutus is adding this, making it really easy to connect to the test server into the client. Um, I guess we want to have some way of communicating with people who are going to be testing things, hopefully, maybe scheduling uh, test times and stuff like that. So I don't know, do we invite invite those people to Slack as well and that sort of thing or what? Maybe. Hmm. Mm 
Uh, well, the problem is, the problem is the pe people who tested the eyes were motivated by the fact that most of them could not connect otherwise. So there won't be this kind of motivation for testing generic. I, I wrote this into just here, so basically you could just create as many roles as you want and people can subscribe for them. And what we can do is we can just try pinging those ice testers and tell them, yeah, we need your help for this and this. Well, Maybe they will sign up. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, I yeah, have one more pr proposition. I have one more proposition. Uh, uh, well, uh, when we start the client, I think we can uh, tell people in news that we are searching for testers, developers, etc. So again, the problem that can be put on news. There's only one news that's displayed automatically. I mean, you can look through them. But only one is displayed immediately, and nobody reads them. Like literally, nobody. There's like. <laughs> I would say that I would say that less than a hundred people on FAF read the news out of the entire like population. Yeah, so we need like a like and a new, news pop up where you need to actively clear it away, right? Well the thing is it's set up, but like it doesn't update when you still got the client open. So you look at it and nothing's changed. Uh, if you if you make a news post, and you already got the client open, you know. Well, yeah, but when when you look at it, like, it doesn't. It doesn't even when even when you post something, if you've got the client open already. And you look at the news; it doesn't change. So you've got like uh, you have to close and reopen the client to see the new news. Yes, I think I did like two years ago. Okay, I, I need to repeat this. Axel just said he's an idiot because he did not uh, record his own voice. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, well, you sure, only I'm hit sure. like half of the points on the agenda, right? I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, we have notification bar. Uh, can we make them the notification for the news? Yeah, we can do. I don't know. Um... Oh, actually, something that would be really useful is like re-implementing the uh, the topic back into the Java client. The topic? You, you mean this? Yeah, oh, the this... chat topic. Yeah. Chat topic. I, I looked into it. It sort of get harder since the last time it was introduced. <laughs> Well, like, do we actually like... need to do it with the IRC channel topic, or can we just do it <laughs> any, differently? Any way you can do it, like any banner that I can easily like interact with, would be really nice. 
Like I'm asking, why well, I'm asking if you can notice people, like there is the new, uh, for example, new, uh, the new top uh, topic uh, in the client. They can read it. Maybe we could find testers and people for development. Maybe people doesn't even know that we need people. That's likely, yeah. yeah. Let's try this just once. How about that? Yeah, but if you if you do a news post, first make a way on Discord to subscribe to the tester role so people actually do it. Because, well, if you just say, well, we need testers, and well, um, no idea where you should, who you should talk to, then well, that's not going to work out. So, uh, I think you need to, and you need to have some way to to ping them, and this way is Discord because also nobody's going to download Slack like 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 normal people like the Teslas. They're not going to download Slack and, and be online. And it's it's the it implementation the detail. It's only the implementation detail. Yeah. But uh, well, it wasn't done be yet, so well, I, we need to do it first. And but Geo such have said it's super easy, so um, well, um, you're responsible for this. Uh, have fun. What did I say? <laughs> Let, let's talk about uh, Excel. Let's talk about uh, this later. Better, uh, better thoughts, better solution. Maybe you will think uh, how to do this uh, properly. I will think about that. Maybe we will find the solution to find the people. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So are we done for today? Yeah. Oh fuck! I I I, I fucked up recording, and so it's so sad. No problem. Wow. Well, <laughs> I don't have point to time. Uh, it was so it was so idiotic. I I, I turned up desktop audio but i didn't think about that well on my desktop audio it's not me and i didn't turn up my microphone audio yeah, it's all right whatever.